Montag lieben Klausen Globen. Hey everyone, I just thought I'd do a quick video um, showing my new Husqvarna TE300 2017 model. Picked it up a few days ago, haven't had a chance to ride it with Christmas and what have you. So I just uh, do a quick walk around and show you some of the um, differences between the 17s and the earlier, earlier models. I have my 2015. FE350 which uh, yeah obviously has a different motor but uh, the frames are similar to the two strokes so I just thought I'd show you some differences between these um, the new generation Husqvarna's and the um, early model so obviously there's some minor changes there's some major changes one of the major changes is the uh, frame um, I know they've changed the torsional rigidity and all that sort of scientific stuff which I don't really understand but uh, the most obvious change um, visually is the fact that the subframe um, now mounts on the rear of the frame here and they now incorporate a separate full plastic frame guard whereas the early models the subframe mounted down here on the bottom of the frame and on the outside which as you can see used to cop a fair bit of abuse from your boots so hopefully the new design should alleviate some of that and also being a bolt-on frame guard they're fairly easy and cheap to replace where on the other models you only really had a choice if you really wanted to make it look pristine would be to upgrade the entire subframe uh, Another minor change while we're in this vicinity of the bike is of course the foot pegs. Um, they now have sort of uh, less serrations, more of these um, pimples I suppose. Um, I'm not sure the, they're supposed to be a hold less dirt. Um, we'll see how that goes. Um, and also the brake pedal apparently on this one is, uh, I'm not sure if it's 10, 15 mil longer. Uh, and also they've changed the brake tip um, also has more of these large sort of pimple designs rather than serrations and they've also changed the, the tip design itself and the earlier bikes it was always a recommendation to um, file off these inner teeth in case it damaged your clutch cover if the bike fell over but they've obviously taken heed of um, the customers perhaps and they now have a, a really neat little loop and a chamfered edge here so hopefully that should resist damage or reduce the chances of damage to your um, clutch cover so yeah that's pretty neat it's only a small detail change i did find on my earlier te uh, 316 model that the rear brake was quite touchy um, even more so than the fe 350 um, I don't know why that is, but I'm hoping that um, that, that touchiness may be allevi alleviated by that um, slightly longer brake lever. This is an aftermarket tip, as you can see, but uh, it is quite close. This one, it does have a chamfer, being an aftermarket part, but the original brake pedal did have quite sharp teeth, uh, which are prone to punch through that if you're unlucky enough to fall over on something subtle like a rock. This is the older style foot pig as well. You can see there's more, more serrated design, and um, yeah, it's a minor change, but um, we'll see what happens when you ride. I imagine the grip levels are probably very similar, but um, like most things, it's not revolution; it's evolution. Um, okay, going back over to the 300. Um, obviously the plastics are changed, they now have a, a much larger one piece, oh well, not, well just a larger side panel which comes up right underneath the, the tank there and to remove it you pop it and slide it forward, uh, whereas the older bike basically had uh, this clip here and you popped it and you pulled it off 
backwards. Um, yeah, it's probably the, at least in the last, you know, it's uh, visually quite different plastics than the, the early model. The early model had more these pointy guards and wedge shape and pointed rear guard. Um, even the headlight itself, uh, you know, round here, round here. Uh, whereas the new bike has gone to a more square headlight, square number plate design, square edge on the fenders and just round on the top, not wedged. Same on the rear. Um, anyway, that's all sort of um, cosmetic type things. The swing arm um, actually looks the same. It's just where they've machined that flat edge on it, I think, is different because the actual shape of the swing arm is the same. So you can see here, the shape is very similar, but they just have machined it in a slightly different position. I'm not sure why they've done that, but um, yeah. Uh, Actually, while we're still on this side of the bike, sorry, I had an interruption there. Um, have a look at the bash plate. The bash plate used to be held on with a Zeus fastener, uh, which was simply a quarter turn to remove it, which was very handy, but uh, probably a little not quite less secure. They've now bolted it securely to the frame. Um, I'll probably be leaving that, see how that goes. The uh, expansion chamber, or the pipe, uh, seems narrower, oh, not narrow, but seems to be higher and slightly more tucked in on the 2017 than it was on the 2016. I will eventually get myself a P3 uh, carbon pipe guard for this. Um, as I said, I've not even ridden this yet, but uh, yeah, that's probably one of the most things that's most prone to damage, particularly on a two-stroke more than any other thing. Um, yeah, well, I've, uh, I've added a couple of little protection things already. I've put on the uh, fourth rear disc guard. I've also put on the uh, fourth accessories uh, case saver and the fourth accessories um, radiator guards. Uh, that's not actually the right logo, that's the logo that the dealer I bought it from has put on there, but uh, you can just see through there, it's the fourth accessories. Bit of gear. Right, what else is new? Uh, the rear shock is new. Um, I don't know the full specs, I, you know, the, the older bikes, uh, the rear suspension was never really seemed to have any complaints, all the all the complaints seem to have been directed at the uh, four CS forks, <coughs> which on the 16 and previous models. Um, the new 17 has the new Explore 48. Um, major external difference is the addition of the spring prelad adjustment, which you can just see through there, like this giant wing nut. Uh, otherwise, you still have your separate uh, compression and rebound adjustment on the uh, top of the forks there. Staying at the front end, we can see the handlebars have now gone from a uh, grey silver to a black handlebar. Uh, probably just a purely cosmetic thing. I actually prefer the black handlebars. Um, the other major change, I suppose, is the Magura clutch. I don't know why they went from the Brembo to the Magura, but um, the action feels exactly the same. Um, ours is not to reason why, I suppose. The switch gear has changed. Um, it still comes with the map switch. All Husqvarna's come with a map switch, um, which I believe if you're a KTM, you've got to pay for that separately or buy a six days. Um, it has a separate uh, on-off switch block there and your separate starter button. All Huskies also come with machined CNC triple clamps. Um, 
which once again is not something you get on a standard KTM, but you do on the six days. I would say Husqvarna is basically your um, halfway between your standard KTM EXC and your um, six days. There's some extra nice little bits on the six days, uh, but you do get more on a Husky than you would on a bare bones KTM. I've also fitted the um, Ego Bark Busters um, and the bar pad off a uh, TC motocrosser. I just reckon they look really cool and uh, help preserve your teeth, I suppose. But um, uh, the motor is probably the next biggest change. Uh, mainly two things, one is the addition of the counterbalancer uh, and the uh, relocation of the starter motor to underneath the motor uh, which they probably copied from Beta um, and apparently it's supposed to be so far a lot more reliable and it does seem to definitely start easier off the starter especially when cold than the 16 model um, I usually always, well it was always recommended to um, kickstart and cold and then they would start no problem on the button but with this one you can basically pop the choke hit the button and she fires instantly um, yeah so that's obviously a better design plus these also come with a lithium iron battery now which uh, probably goes towards some of the weight saving it probably saves at least a kilogram these batteries only weigh around half a kilogram or yeah about a pound a bit over a pound um, one thing I noticed on the rear is that the 16 model came with a super stock rear sprocket which was blue uh, with an outer steel rim, aluminium with an outer steel rim. They've now gone back to just a plain black steel sprocket I believe. I don't think it's aluminium. Um, you'll notice I have the tubeless system fitted which these wheels are actually on my 16300 and the dealer kindly swapped them over off the new bike to this so I didn't have to repurchase it. The tyres were Michelin Starcross 5 that I had on them and they were pretty good, I've only done a couple of rides on them so I was happy to let them keep the original tyres and um, keep my tubular system which I think is great. Um, yeah, what else can I say about it? Um, the carburetor is the now the uh, 38mm McCuny as opposed to the 36mm Kaihin which was on the earlier bikes. Um, I've not heard great reports about these carbs um, and also some issues with the uh, reed cage but um, anyway time will tell I'm going to ride it first. I did have an Electron uh, on my 16 model which was great but um, these carbs are the new ones are even more expensive they're nearly $800 in Australia so that's quite an expensive proposition. I'm really going to see how this carb goes, and um, if it's really a problem, we'll we'll just see what happens. Yeah, so that's about it for my brand new TE17300. Just comparing the 350, uh, the handlebar arrangement. Um, you can see the older style switch block here that had the uh, on off switch and starter button here. This obviously has the uh, flex fastway bars on this. Um, the older bars were silver. Um, the only other mod that I've made to it so far is me only being a short guy. I'm only 168 centimetres tall and uh, mid 50s, so. Uh, getting to the ground can be a bit of an issue so I have put on the uh, factory lower seat which is about 15 millimeters lower and I've also set my re-sag to 110 millimeters and one thing that's really cool on the new bike is they actually have a little sag line so you can set your, t set your tape measure from your swing arm to that so how cool is that? Um, what else was I going to say? Yeah. Oh, 
and as far as suspension goes, just to get that little bit lower, I have uh, dropped five millimeters down through the triple clamps there. I'll see how I go with this. I might end up getting it um, lowered, maybe 25 mil or an inch. Um, I had that done on my 350 by Promoted Suspension here in Australia, uh, Newcastle, Australia, and uh, it definitely makes a difference in the gnarly stuff. It does give you that little bit more confidence over rocky areas and you know slippery tree roots and logs and that sort of thing. Um, just being able to get a foot down in, in an emergency. Um, yeah, that's about it. As I say, I'm really keen to ride it. I haven't had a chance as yet. Hopefully I'll rectify that situation in the next couple of days. Anyway, I hope you found the video of interest. Um, thanks for watching and um, all the best for the new year and thanks for watching. See ya.